Okay, potentiometer time. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you something. Uh, if you notice there's an optional amp meter here, you don't really need it. Because um, what you're really looking at is you're looking at this voltage here. Okay, then this is, this is what, you know, uh, this is what matters because this is terminal 2. Um, let me see here, this would be terminal 1, I guess. I'll call that 1, so that's going to be terminal 1. That's going to be terminal 2. And don't forget the whole point of these cards is you can write on them. No, no, see, I was wrong with that. Da, 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 da. You make mistakes, right? Everybody makes mistakes. That's terminal 3. This is going to be terminal 2 because that's the signal. So this is the signal right here. And this is what would be going into the ECM or whatever. Okay. So there's your signal. Um, so what I can do here, just to kind of prove a point, um, just using the voltmeter, Circuit's turned on, so current's actually flowing through the uh, the one to three. So it's flowing through here. Okay, so here's my potentiometer right here. So I forgot I drew those. Okay, so right now current is actually whichever way you like current flow, and I don't really care if you remember what I've said. I don't care about the direction of current flow. If you think current flows from positive to negative, that's fine. I don't care. And sure enough, boom, 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 and this resistor is heating up and it's dropping all 12 volts in this case. All right, now there are a couple of ways to test that, and the first one is to know that this is changing, which is only changeable if current's flowing, because voltage can't drop unless current's flowing. So what I can do, just to prove a point here, is I can put my voltmeter here, okay, and I'm getting like 0 0.4 millivolts. And then notice as I turn it, and 12.43 would be 6. Point, oops, 6.24. A little tough. Ooh, wow, I got lucky. That was a lucky shot there. So that should be about half right there. Okay, now one of the ways I can prove that is to measure the amp flow through it if I wanted to. But the, the key here is to understand that if I get a, uh, if I have an open ground for troubleshooting purposes, watch what happens. The voltage goes to full voltage and now it doesn't change. Okay, so that's an open ground and your voltage is constant because well, there's no current flow, and if there's no current flow, there's no drop in voltage. If there's no drop in voltage, the, the, the potentiometer can't measure a different voltage, okay? So that's an open ground, and notice that it hits 12 point full voltage and stays at 12 point full voltage, okay? So there's no change. There's no adjustment. There's no throttle adjustment. There's no position adjustment. There's nothing, okay? So let me fix that real quick. And then, see, that's what I like about these cards. It's like, they, ow, that hurt. Um, the cards make it possible to do some pretty amazing sort of repair work here. That's kind of cool. Okay, so now it should be working again because we fixed the open in the ground. All right, so now my voltage is changing again. And this is a changing position. So if my hand was the throttle, my throttle would be moving. And as the throttle moves, the throttle... <laughs> No, okay, no, no, that's okay, that was bad. Okay, so anyway, now, so there's an open ground and we get full voltage all the time. So I'm trying to teach you about some of these um some of these fault codes you get. Well now let me open the positive. When I open the positive, guess what? I've just got zero volts coming all the way through, so I'm gonna read zero zero zero. I expect, sure enough, and I read zero zero zero. Why? Because I've got a continuity all the way through here, through this device, and there's no current flow. So if my voltage never changes, then obviously I have no current flow. So I'm looking for current flow to make the potentiometer work. And as I reminded you, only just remember that plus in and ground out, and that's how it works. The 5K part is because, well, we just don't want a lot of current. So let me fix that again. And la 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 la. 
fix this. Yeah, a little too perfect for me. Okay, so now the positive is fixed, so I have flow again, and and sure enough, I'm getting a change in voltage. Okay, but let me point something out here, guys. This meter's on auto range, and this is one of the things you have to understand about potentiometers and rheostats. Watch what happens as the voltage drops down to the 4 volt range. Watch what happens to the reading. Watch it hiccup. See that hiccup there? Well, the hiccup was not a fault in the potentiometer. The hiccup was a fault in reading the meter because the meter has to change ranges. So as you change ranges, the meter kind of hiccups. If you're measuring ohms, that's very bad. Okay? See it kind of jumped there? Okay, well notice that that jump can give you the impression that the throttle position sensor is broken and since mechanics want the part to fail, then that's what you've got. Uh, and people change the potentiometer, the throttle position sensor when it's not actually damaged. So if you're measuring with ohms or volts or whatever, watch that burp, watch that little hiccup there. Um, one of the other tests here, one of the other tests that you should do potentially here is to measure the voltage drop across this potentiometer as you adjust it. And you'll notice that as you adjust it, the voltage drop across it really doesn't change. Okay, and what that's telling me is that the current flow through here really doesn't change. The voltage drop really doesn't change. Okay, but I do get the changing voltage here. Okay, now can you explain that? Are, are you in a... Are you in a comfortable enough and confident enough position to explain that. I mean, that's a separate circuit, and this is a separate circuit. Remember, you know, there's a load. Um, if I wanted to read current flow through there, I could, but I don't really care. Um, but one of the optional tests here is to measure the current flow through the potentiometer, 1 to 3, as it is adjusted. And you'll notice that it doesn't really change. And this is very easy to do. I'll just cut it again here. All right, and I'll put it on amps and move it to milliamps. And I'm going to turn it on here. Notice I get about 2.4 or 2.5 milliamps. Okay, so I wonder how that works out. Well, let's see if I can do this and not embarrass myself. So I've got 5,000 ohms, 12.25 volts, divided by 5,000, it's 0 0 0.00245, which is 2.45 millivolts, milliamps, I'm sorry, and I've got 2.48 milliamps. So the, the point is, is that Ohm's law works, okay, and what is this teaching me? It's teaching me that the 5K ohm potentiometer has only about 2.45 milliamps flowing through it, which is why it can work in an ECM. ECMs don't want a lot of current. Now notice as I adjust the voltage, which you saw a minute ago changing, notice the amperage doesn't change through 1 to 3, okay? So the potentiometer of the 5K ohms, is it just it stays the same. So the current flow through this wire never changes. Okay? But there is a problem that can occur. And I'll show you this because watch what can happen here. I'm going to adjust this. Oops, I got to fix that. Sorry. See? That's you just that's what's I love these cards. I'm so happy with them. I, I wanted to do them like 15 years ago. 
the internet just couldn't keep up. The internet wasn't there yet. Come on, fix that. There we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, now, so, dog barking. Okay, so, here now watch. We do this, and we turn this, and we get that. So, I'm going to run it down. I'm going to run it down to six and a quarter, or a little bit less. And in doing that, I'm setting the position. And what I want to prove to you is that corrosion can kick your butt with these sensors and it's wiring wire 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 okay and everybody wants to change the sensor everybody wants to do this and that. check the damn wires all right check the wires first and you can do it by simply reading voltage okay because what can you learn from this you can learn to expect that the voltage drop across eh, it's very tough here We'll take it. Take that. Okay. So the voltage drop across this potentiometer should be full source voltage and this number should change, right? Okay. Now watch. Watch what happens if I can successfully find a resistor in this box way back here that I didn't mean to put back here. Oh, gee, my mini. I did something to my left arm and it hurts like a son of a bitch. So what I'm going to do, this is 5K, so I'm going to find something if I have it in here that's going to be about a quarter of that. There's 180, there's 100, there's uh, uh, 8, no, yellow, that's 4. Yeah, here we go, here's 470. So this, I think this is 470. Black, brown, red, orange, yellow, 4, yeah. Black, brown, red, orange, yellow. Yeah, four. So this is a 470 ohm resistor here. Four and, yeah, sorry. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to show you how these cards work because it's kind of cool. This is going to play the role of corrosion, all right? So we've got corrosion going on in here. That's a bad thing. Corrosion is horrible. It's terrible, and nobody goes looking for it, okay? And that's the problem. So I'm going to show you how to do this. And the example I have here is a is a is a coal mining machine that had four potentiometers that provided a position for four tracks and three of the tracks were centered and one of the tracks was not and here's how I found it I simply went to the schematic and I found the terminals where the four sensors came together in the same box side by side right next to each other they were exactly where the box said they should be. They weren't missing. They weren't gone. And in spite of what you want to think, um, the schematics do work. So if you're, if you're a supervisor out there, the schematics work. And if you don't let your people read them, you're hurting everybody, including yourself. Because if you help people read schematics, you learn faster or as fast as they do. So now watch. Here's the corrosion. It's about 10% of, eh, plus or minus a little bit, 10% of this. Whoa. Heard. Oh, look at, see, oh, oh, cool. I don't know why that happened, but I love it when that happens. Okay, my, my dog's just going nuts because there's a dog across the street. If you can't hear that, I hear it. It's annoying the crap out of me. Boom, blew the fuse. I love that when a plan comes together. Okay, so I guess I pushed this down and shorted it across with a dead short, which we'll just assume for the sake of argument was a bad thing. Um, so I'll put in a new fuse, which is, oh shoot, which is why this is so cool. I really dig this. Cut it with the soldering iron. Get that out of there. And I'll put this back. Okay, I got a new fuse in there. Dog was barking. Beat on the window. Dog stopped barking. Okay, now, um, here, now here's the thing. What, here, here's, here's why this is important. Corrosion will kick your butt and it will make the machine look like something horrible, terrible is happening, and it's not, okay? Because look, I have a, a normally functioning circuit here, and if I'm lucky, this is going to read about 6.5 volts, and the position sensor is exactly where it's supposed to be, the computer is reading exactly what it's supposed to be, everything's great, but then watch what happens when we put corrosion resistance in this circuit from here to here. Can you predict what's going to happen? 
Okay, now think. This is working on voltage drop. Voltage drops have to add up to source voltage. So the only way for this to be correct is for the voltage in the position that it's in to be exactly what it's supposed to be. But what's this resistance going to do to this voltage drop? You just saw it happen up here, right? I mean, as this voltage drop changes, this voltage drop changes. If this voltage drop changes, the middle changes. So what I'm expecting to happen here, and let me hold it down. Let me see. Let me predict this. This number is going to get this number is going to get smaller. So that number is going to get smaller. No, it got bigger. Oh, I was wrong. Yeah. Hey, you, you guys play around with it and figure it out if you can. Figure out why that happened. Draw it out, do some drawing, and figure it out. I mean, I mean all we're doing is we're just drawing this very same circuit right there. All right, because what we got is we've got the rheostat there, and then we've got the corrosion here. And they got the variable resistor. So we've got, you know, it's it's this circuit right here. Corrosion in this circuit is that circuit. So you should be able to figure that out. And if you're in school, you ought to be able to do that. And if you're not in school, then just work it out in your head. It'll, it'll, it'll you'll figure it out. Okay. And then if I fix it, notice that my position sensor goes back. Broken? Not broken. It's a difference of a half a volt. So the position is right, but the signal is wrong, so the computer thinks that the, th the boom or the arm or the whatever, they think it, it thinks it's somewhere else. Okay, so play around with this and put different resistors in here and play around with here. I've got a 10K ohm that I was going to put in here, but I think I'll leave that to you because I've used up enough of your time. So um, summary, rheostat controls amperage. But yes, it also has an effect on the voltage drop. Um, the potentiometer literally measures voltage because I had my voltmeter here and the voltage was... Okay, but yeah, there's a voltage drop. Okay, so it, it, the, the potentiometer and rheostat are really very, fairly simple. Um, if you understand these, as far as I'm concerned, you're going to understand everything else there is to know about pretty much everything there is. Okay, so these are important. If you have any questions, let me know. This is card six. Thank you for watching. And um, tune in again next time for card number seven, which I hope to start working on as soon as I shut off this video. Thank you very much and good day.